means I'm telling you what it means. Now you see why Allah reacts. Now you see why he reacts. Sayyid is an, a term used in animal husbandry. You see, they keep pedigrees of horses and they tell you the father of this horse and the mother was so-and-so and the great-grandmother of this horse was so-and-so and the great-grandfather was so-and-so and on and on. Pedigrees of horses, pedigrees of cows, bulls, the pedigree. So where they originate? Who was the great-grandfather of that bull? Where did it come from? The Brahman bull, it came from India, you know, a hundred years ago. And from that grandfather, we got this, then, and, 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 and this is his great, great grandchild. Child. Pedigree. They use this term in animal husbandry. Sired. This bull was, this cow was sired by a certain bull. That's what it means. This is actually what it means. Now, it is the Judas and that term, father, is not in the Quran. Beautiful word. But it's not there. I said, that is a miracle. The 99 names are miracle. But you say, look, if you want to discount them, discount them. The miracle is that the commonest, the most readily available, available, the one that is being dangled before him for 23 years, he doesn't catch it. And he makes us to eschew that word. Don't use it. You see, Rabbul Alam. He's Rab, he's Rab, he's Rab. He's not Ab, Ab, Ab. Miracle. Substance of the message. Allah says, Another example I give you. He says, do not the unbelievers see. These atheists, these agnostics, the people who deny the existence of God, can't they see? In other words, Allah expects them to see, to be able to see, to witness. That the heavens and the earth were joined together as one unit of creation. And he split them asunder. Who is he talking to? Who is he addressing? Kafir. Which Kafir? The Badwins of 1400 years ago? No, no, no. What can the poor man understand? Well, what did he know about the universe, about the creations of the heavens and the earth? What did he know? He only accepted whatever was said. If this was Allah's kalam, amanna saddakna. We hear and we accept. We believe. This was iman that they had. They didn't have a grasp. Allah is not addressing those unbelievers of the times of Muhammad or the unbelievers in the Congo or among the Eskimos who might not believe in God. No, 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 no. He is talking to the men of science, men of learning who are now expounding to the world the theory of creation. That these astronomers with the mighty telescopes, when they're looking into space and they're analyzing the, the movements in the heavens, and they're telling you as if they did it. If they are the ones who are making these things, this machine, this clock to work. This clock of the universe. The way they explain it as if they are doing it. Such a person with his great learning, he says that this universe came into being with a big bang billions of years ago. Because he is watching the universe and he is noticing that these heavenly bodies are receding from a central place somewhere. Is all going out in all directions, moving away, away, away. Like a balloon. When you blow it gets bigger and bigger. Something like that is happening in the skies, in the heavens. These galaxies, they are receding from us at a faster and faster speed. At a faster and faster speed. And once they reach the speed of light 186,000 miles per second once they reach that speed we won't be able to see it anymore because the light that is coming from there it won't be coming anymore it's going away so we must discover bigger and better telescopes to see the sights the wonders otherwise we'll miss the bus so they say that this universe came into being with a big bang the big bang theory who says that the most learned men of science, astronomers. He say, hey, where did you get these funny ideas from? This fairy tale about a big bang. So no, 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 it is not fairy tales. These are facts. 
demonstrable facts. We can demonstrate it, show you what is happening. And from that we can conclude, if we had a film and put in reverse gear, so we could see what is happening is all coming back again. With the way it's going out, the balloon, if we can deflate it, you'll see it all coming back to one central point. And there was a big bang. When did you discover this? He said, yesterday. Because 50 years is yesterday in the history of man. What is 50 years? Nothing. As an, an illiterate man in the desert, a person who didn't know how to read or write, a person who couldn't sign his own name, he could have, couldn't have known this, could he? He says, no, never. Impossible. Man doesn't know astronomy. He hasn't got the instruments. He hasn't got a telescope. Nothing. In the desert. And among an ummi people, illiterate people. And he is now telling you, this man in the desert, 1,400 years ago, kana taratkan, fafatakna huma, and he split them asunder. And you biologists, people who study minute life, microplotism, the amoeba, he says, you know, life originated in the sea, water. Without this water, no life. And they tell you, says, look, we look back in time, in space, he says, look, this is how life originated. There was a time when this earth was a molten mass, nothing could have survived here, everything boiling, boiling, and over a period of billions of years, you know, the vapors went up and came down, and the vapors went up and came down and started cooling this earth, it took a billions of years, and then started life, germs, plant life, and all these things started. At one time, there was nothing, and then it started. Where did life come from? He says, from the sea. Certain chemical actions, the sun playing its part, and life started from there. Mm -hmm. When did you find this out? It's yesterday. Because 50 years is yesterday in the history of man. An illiterate man in the desert, he couldn't have known that, could he? He says, no, never. He says, well, listen. He says, and he has made from water every living thing. Say, will you then not believe? Who? You, men of science, you, men of learning, you kafir, you atheist, you agnostic, why can't you believe? That this is not his handiwork. As Allah says, Awalam yakfihim, anna ansanla alayka al kitaba yutla alayhim, inna fi dhalika la rahmatan wa dhikra li qawmi yuminun. And these are signs, blessings, and a remembrance for a people who believe that he might have written this. In a verse preceding this, verse 48 of Surah An-Kabut, chapter 29, he says, He says, you were not in the habit, O Muhammad, you were not in the habit of reading as if out of a book. Nor were you able to transcribe it with your right hand. In that case, these talkers of vanity, these babblers in the marketplaces, they might have had some reason to doubt. Muhammad was a learned man. He says, you see, he was in the certain university. And you know, now he's telling you these things, his theories. Yes, they might have some reason to doubt if he had been through that schooling, if the Arabs had some knowledge or understanding of science, learning, nothing. Allah shows you that he sends you an, an ummi prophet to an ummi people. Amazing. He chooses a nation steeped in ignorance. The whole of Arabia, 